Well, hello, hello. We find ourselves in a new destination. We are currently in Ljubljana, Slovenia. We've only been here a few days, but I can already say this is one of our new favorite cities in Europe. Yeah, it sure is. It's just been so charming. It's small, so easy to navigate on foot, and mm -hmm. we've just been having a lot of great experiences here. So we're gonna show you 10 different things you can do here in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Let's go check it out. So we are starting our sightseeing here, right in the center of town. We are in Pressure and Square. Beautiful pink church behind us. And yes. guess what? We also have three bridges. We're at the Triple Bridge. <laughs> triple Bridge. What is the reasoning behind this? What do you think? I have no idea. It's being used a lot. You know, know. there's a tons of people walking, there's people biking. And I just saw a river cruise go right underneath yeah, the yeah, Triple Bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's a really so. busy area. Yeah. I think we should choose the main bridge. Let's yeah. walk down the middle bridge of the Triple Bridge. Let's go. Prasheran Square is a central meeting spot in the heart of the old town, so it made sense to start our tour of Ljubljana here. The square is named after Slovene national poet Franz Prasheran, and this is where you'll also find the Franciscan Church of the Annunciation, lots of gelato shops, and the baffling bridge we just mentioned. As for the reasoning behind the triple bridge, it turns out that at one point there was only one bridge, which wasn't wide enough to handle vehicles and pedestrians. To prevent a bottleneck, an architect decided it would make sense to build two additional bridges for pedestrians on either side of the middle bridge. Of course, today the whole area is close to traffic, so that leaves visitors with three bridges to choose from. So Sam, you've been finding all of these bridges pretty fascinating, but this one in particular. I've been most fascinated by this bridge for one very particular good reason. And I've seen a lot of Lovelock bridges around the world, but I've never seen one so organized. Normally mm -hmm. there are way too many Lovelocks, it's almost like tearing down the bridge. But here they're like almost like perfectly symmetrical, there's yeah, not too many. Yeah, it's very tidy. It's very tight. it's the tidiest Lovelock bridge I have ever seen. And this is not the only fascinating bridge, if you just look over here, I believe that one is called the Dragon's Bridge. The and Dragon. we're gonna go walk to that one next. If you keep walking east along the river, you will come across the famed Dragon Bridge, which is guarded by four dragons, one on each corner. Legend has it that Jason, a hero from ancient Greek mythology, founded the city and killed a dragon, so that explains the bridge and the numerous dragon statues you'll see scattered around Ljubljana. Alright, so after walking across a gazillion bridges it feels, we have finally reached the central market. Yes. It smells amazing, we're in the flower section right yeah. now and it's like fresh blooms. Yeah, so we're noticing lots of flowers, also there's a really big fruit and produce section and there's also another section on the other side which is selling souvenirs. Yeah, and all that being said, we are visiting in the middle of the week and it's also late in the afternoon so it's not super busy, a lot of the stands are starting to shut down, but it still looks really pretty, so let's have a look. If markets are your thing, Ljubljana Central Market is another spot worth checking out. Aside from fresh produce, plants and flowers, we also noticed a few food trucks along the perimeter where you can grab a meal on the go. And while you're in the area just west of the market, you have Ljubljana Cathedral, also known as St. Nicholas Church, which is another major landmark in the old town. We had big sightseeing plans on our second day in Ljubljana, but first up we needed to sample some Slovenian food, so we went to Alegria. Sam ordered Žlikrofi, a Slovenian dumpling stuffed with potato which came with a lamb goulash, and I ordered the Slovenian sausage with cabbage and mashed potatoes. Then for dessert we had a layered pastry stuffed with poppy seeds, walnuts, apples, raisins and a light dusting of icing sugar. All of that including wine was 28 euros. After a filling lunch, we were ready to kick off our sightseeing. Our first stop, Ljubljana Castle, which sits on Castle Hill overlooking the city. Alright, today the sightseeing commences with a visit to Ljubljana Castle and we just got our tickets. We paid 10 euros per person and that was to take a ride up the funicular so we could save our legs. But it also included admission to the castle, so not bad. 
Originally built as a medieval fortress in the 11th century, Ljubljana Castle has seen many redesigns and renovations. If you're only wanting to visit the central courtyard, you can enter free of charge. However, if you pay for the ticket, this allows you to climb the Outlook Tower, which offers 360 degree views of the city. All right, Sam, you ready to climb some more stairs? Yeah, we've been burning off lunch and now we've got the spiral stairs. All right, lead the way. Yeah. Oh, it's pushed over. Yeah. Push to go in. Oh, it's kind of cool here though. I mean, like cool as in the air temperature is cooler. Oh! <laughs> cool as in refreshing. Refreshing. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, guys. This isn't exactly the kind of staircase I was expecting or the kind of staircase I enjoy because I'm not a huge fan of heights and with this one you can really see all the way down like you can see through the steps you can see to the side oh my gosh we're almost there All right, time for the next adventure. Yeah, so we're gonna be taking a river cruise and mm -hmm. we already got really good views of Ljubljana from a high vantage point. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to see it from ground level, well, more specifically river level. Yeah. Let's do it. How much was it? Oh, <laughs> it's eight euro per person. <laughs> there are a few different departures for cruises down to Ljubljanica. We boarded our cruise directly underneath the Love Lock Bridge, which is actually called Mizarski Most. This was our favorite activity in Ljubljana and it was a super relaxed way to watch the city go by. All right, so I would say we got the best seats in the house. Yeah. We're up front, is that the bow or the helm? I don't really know my boat lingo. Well, put it this way, we're sitting in lawn chairs and we're yeah. gonna have front row seats, so. And we even have blankets, like if you do this tour later on in the day and it gets a bit chilly, so this is perfect. Right, so that was a lovely boat tour. So, so <sighs> relaxing. It was so relaxing. You slept for half of it. To be fair, as soon as we got on, <laughs> we each got a glass of wine. Sam yeah. got the red, I had a glass of white. Then you put, then you wrapped yourself <laughs> up in a blanket and you're out like, you're as snug as a bug. <laughs> I missed half the journey. You really did. But anyway, but it we're was gorgeous. Get... And that was a really good river cruise. Some yeah. river cruises suck, to be honest. That one was good. But that one was good. From it was what nice. I saw. Yeah, from what you saw, I was awake for the whole thing and it was really good. It was nice and long, 45 minutes, so I'd recommend that. Only eight euros, pretty good value. And now, time for ice cream. Oh yeah. All right guys, so we stopped at Cacao, which yeah. is the most famous ice cream shop in the whole city. We Double scoops. Double scoops. So what did you get? Roman raisin and pistachio. And how is it? Oh, it's good. I've been already digging in. <laughs> um, I got mm. Santo Domingo chocolate and wild strawberries. Tastes so much of rum. Look at this. Look at the size. I know. These are huge. <laughs> we had a huge lunch. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Ultimate pigs over here. Well, welcome to what is probably the most colorful neighborhood in the whole city. We are currently in Metalkova, and this area used to be an ex-army garrison, and then it was taken over squatters in the 90s, and they kind of started their own 
artsy commune with their own rules. There's lots of street art everywhere. And this place kind of reminds me of a few different spots we visited this year. One of them I'm thinking about is Kiefernstrasse in Dusseldorf, yeah. where they also had this like squatting complex. I mean, we've seen a bit of this in Berlin. There was that neighborhood Sao Paulo. in Sao Paulo, yeah. Beko de Batman. Yeah, Beko de Batman, Batman Alley. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, it's really colorful. So let's go have a look around. Sam, how would you like to be an alien riding a giraffe? Would that suit you? Yeah, that could be an okay life, you know. Give up the life of travel. I'll just be an alien riding a giraffe. <laughs> there you go. Why not? Straight out of Star Wars. Metal Kova is home to a number of clubs and venues that host concerts, performances, and exhibitions. But even if your visit doesn't coincide with one of these events, you can still visit for the street art. As for getting there, Metal Kova is located across the train station and over a few blocks east. Now here's another restaurant recommendation. One place we really enjoyed was Sarajevo 84, a restaurant specializing in Balkan cuisine. Not only were the portions massive, but everything we ordered was absolutely delicious. We had a feast featuring grilled meat with pita and onions, baked beans and sausage, roasted peppers, and a flaky pastry stuffed with cheese. All of that food, including dessert, only came to 23 euros. And if you're in the mood for museums, right across from Tivoli Park, you've got a whole bunch of different museums and galleries for you to choose from. But we're going to skip that because we've had a long day and we have a big adventure coming up tomorrow. What's the plan for tomorrow? We're going to Bled. But speaking of galleries and museums, a few you'll find in the area include the National Gallery, the Museum of Modern Art and the National Museum of Slovenia. Lastly, we finished off the day at Tivoli, which is the largest park in Ljubljana. It's located west of the old town and it's home to numerous gardens. We only visited a fraction of it, but it was a nice way to wind down the day and wrap up our time in the city. And that's it for our time in Ljubljana. Our visit was short, tasty and relaxing, and we're really glad we made some time to visit this underrated capital. Now you guys know the drill. If there are any other things to do in Ljubljana that we may have missed in this travel guide, feel free to share your suggestions with fellow travelers in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and until next time.